Hi, I'm Chris Smith. I was Mr. Kelly's personal assistant and caregiver during the last few months of his life in 1999. But before that, Dee and Carol and his wife were my friends and benefactors for three decades before that. Um, at Dee Memorial Service at Paramount in 1999, I said, in my opinion, DeForest Kelly was the kind of man God had in mind when he created Adam. If this sad old world was more heavily populated with DeForest Kelly types, it would be the paradise we all wish it was. To those of you who knew Dee, I'm sure you're nodding your head. To those who never got the chance to meet Dee, I want to document for this occasion that he didn't just seem to be a great guy. He was the full meal deal. For this first anecdote, I'll paraphrase something from my book, DeForest Kelly, Up Close and Personal, A Harvest of Memories from the Fan Who Knew Him Best. On March 27, 1997, Carolyn called to let us know that she and Dee would like to drive over to my place the following Saturday to visit with me and my parents, if that's okay. I told her it certainly is. Not long before this 90-minute visit, Mom had endured a grueling bout of surgery and chemotherapy for brain cancer up in Washington State where they lived. So she was wearing a turban to hide the fact that her hair had grown back in mismatched colors and textures. The stitches had been removed from the surgical site, but the area was still caved in looking and her hair was still patchy in spots. Instead of the stunning silvery mane she had been complimented on for decades, she had told me earlier that she felt she now looked like someone who would make babies cry in the supermarket. So even though the turban was warm and itchy, she insisted on wearing it when company was around or when she went out in public. The Kellys were aware that mom had been through surgery and chemo not long before, so Carolyn mentioned how wonderful she looked. Mom said, well, thank you. Then she said, I miss my hair. Carolyn said, don't worry, it'll be back, better than ever, maybe even curly. Mom hesitated briefly and then responded, I don't normally do this except around family, but I feel comfortable with you. Let me show you how my hair is coming in. Then you'll know why I wear this turban. Slowly, painfully slowly, I thought, she pulled the turban from the top of her head, revealing the multiple colors of her hair and the remaining bare patches. I knew how much courage that took. I held my breath knowing that it would be difficult for the Kellys, too, as sensitive as they were. Dee stood up then and adop adopted a McCoy-like stance and authority, but he was still authentically D. Then he walked over to where she was sitting and said, yes, let's get a good look at you. It's time for your physical. Mom stood up. Dee embraced her and held her for a long moment. Then he gently pushed her out to arm's length, gave her the once over, head to toe, and proclaimed, you are a beautiful woman, Dorothea, and you're going to be just fine. I never loved DeForest Kelly more than I did at that moment. Mom melted, hugged him again, and responded gratefully, I know I'm going to be fine. I wish all you people would stop worrying about me. Mom left the turban off a lot more often after that visit. DeForest Kelly had told her she was beautiful and that she was going to be fine. And that was the only prognosis she was prepared to, to believe. Here's something else you may not know. Dee's father, a minister, wanted him to follow in his footsteps because he possessed the perfect servant heart and spirit. And although Dee went in a different direction, I have frequently stated that he did indeed have a ministry. It was us, his fans, his friends, and his coworkers. At a convention I attended, a woman told Dee as he stood on stage something about a truly horrific childhood she had endured. She confessed to him that to survive she had adopted him as her virtual father and that doing so had probably saved her life to know that there were people like him in the world. And then she said, I know you don't know me from Adam, but may I give you a hug to thank you. He opened his arms, took a step forward and said, certainly, come to Papa. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. Dee was the safe Papa, the loving Papa, the adoring Papa. He made everyone he knew and met feel safe, seen, understood, and deeply, dearly loved. I could go on and on in the same way you could about the loved ones you're remembering today, but that isn't in the cards for any of us today. So I'll end with this. Decades ago, when the big three of the original series were asked if they'd go into space, if given the chance, 
Dee responded enthusiastically in a heartbeat. So that's why I reached out to Mark Lee and Celestis to see if donating a lock of Dee's hair to this glorious endeavor would be welcome. Dee's ashes and Carolyn's five years later were scattered off Port, Port, Point Furman near San Pedro in California where the two lovers had spent so many afternoons and evenings as spooners and newlyweds in the mid to late 40s and early 50s. But tomorrow, some of Dee's DNA will be wending its way toward deep space for an eternal ride alongside so many of his cast members, crewmates, friends, and fans. Second star to the right and straight on till morning, and I'm guessing he's delighted. DeForest Kelly, loving you was easier than anything we will ever do again. <laughs>